I'm from a company called uh, Cibo Labs. We're, we're basically a data science and remote sensing company. So uh, we established ourselves in the marketplace uh, two years ago, uh, but uh, really that was about sort of 10 years in the making. So the usual story of basically where you, you know these, a lot of these companies, we might be young, but we've been, been in, it for, in it for a while. Um, and I suppose something that's actually quite di differentiated us as well is we really... There was a lot of groundwork done basically before we hit the market and basically pretty much the day one, the first day we turned the lights on, we basically had clients uh, that we actually that were paying for work. So we actually we haven't been taking the venture capital money, we've been basically growing the business organically uh, through uh, through real customers with uh, with real revenue, which is uh, which is a nice way to be doing it. I suppose when we when we first started the business, we were really focusing on um, things specifically to do with pasture biomass and uh, and land condition assessments. And our and our primary clients are really the corporate agricultural, the corporate pastoral companies. So we really got to start with some confidence and some trust from some very large uh, corporate cattle companies in the north. But over the last over the last couple of years, we've basically started to that we've been doing multiple pivots as we as we're going. But still, the core is really our, our, our core pastoral monitoring business. So those issues around climate variability, variability we found ourselves monitoring floods for for, uh, for pastoralists in the north. Um, we're now working with uh, with retail companies. We're working with processors. So this whole issue is basically about how we actually get a better understanding of the value chain. So um, you know, a few years ago, basically uh, our primary client was basically with the, uh, with the individual producers, and now we're actually working with processors and retailers, actually who are supporting their producer network. So how do they actually how do they manage their supply chain? How do they manage their supply chain risk? We're actually starting to work with retailers and processors, basically about that. I've got to, it's just transitioning without. Um, Change that. It's. Well, I've got. I'll try it one more time. Oh, okay. I think it might be. So, so I suppose we've seen we've seen some shifts basically in terms of um, the the awareness of the supply chain uh, and. And we're also sort of starting, we're doing a lot of work basically at the industry level. So I suppose as a small company, if we find ourselves now working with individual producers and we're delivering about 20 million hectares of individual pasture buy, individual paddock pasture biomass data every week now. So um, that's, a lot, that's a, lot of, uh, a lot of data being delivered directly to, uh, to producers um, across the country on a weekly basis. But we're also basically working at the other end of the spectrum with, uh, with the industry and contributing to things like the Beef Sustainability Report. And there's actually a sheep, um, a sheep uh, sustainability report coming along as well. And I want to touch on that as well. So I suppose we're, we're working from the individual paddock um, and then actually right to the, uh, the other end of the spectrum at the, individual, at the industry level and everywhere in between in terms of how we actually get the producer connected basically back through that supply chain uh, and the processes and the retailers. So I suppose in terms of the core things that we're doing, in terms of the value proposition... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so things around around basically kilos per hectare. So there's been there's been many many years basically working basically around around uh, estimating pasture biomass and remote sensing hasn't done a terribly good job of that in the past. Uh, working at things like uh, how many grazing days we have in the paddock. Um, uh, Issues of land conditions, so uh, estimating ground cover within a paddock and across a property, and how's my ground condition, uh, ground cover changing over time. So looking at both the production perspective uh, as well as the uh, the land condition perspective. I'm going to touch on that uh, as well as I go. Now, I suppose in terms of the, this is a bit of a messy slide, but I suppose in terms of uh, how individual companies and producers interact. I think there's been some comments here earlier on about basically about we've got lots of people sort of trying to throw apps at producers. Uh, and I suppose we're finding ourselves in that place as well. But when you've got a producer that basically has to do things like you know do biosecurity plans and other things, um, they've got to be uh, they've got to be working with their processor. They've got to be collecting data in the paddock. Uh, and there's now other other efforts basically at play around uh, sustainability reporting, particularly in the beef industry. Um, we've now got a number of mechanisms uh, that are basically trying to uh, develop accreditation systems for the uh, for the beef industry. So how do we actually have information flowing basically from the individual paddock level at that bias? security level right through to um, how do we report across the whole uh, the whole industry basically from a paddock effectively to the nation and even things in the middle there basically around uh, individual animal recording so that market is actually developing quite rapidly um, so what we're doing is things like using uh, ENVD technologies to develop basically uh, blockchain systems for registering and, and authenticating and onboarding properties uh, to allow them to flow effectively the information through that information chain so things around pasture biomass, um, looking at uh, changes in land condition over time, uh, tree cover, it's not an issue here, but basically we're doing a lot of work in northern Australia around tree cover, monitoring.
monitoring and demonstrating to the marketplace that um, uh, uh, producers actually are looking after their landscape. And we're getting into carbon accounting as well. So we actually want to make sure that we've got systems in place that allow a producer to walk down that value chain and to be able to talk to other systems along the, along the way. And so it's not just CBO Labs actually doing that. Just wanted to quickly touch on some of the technology perspectives and I'll dive back, dive back into how we're using it. So I suppose with, there's been quite a few slides showing there, but I suppose in terms of the last five years, uh, particularly the last three years, we've actually obviously had a big shift in, in, uh, in technology capability. I was a, a post-grad student in 1987 and thought we were going to solve the world's problems with airborne video um, and uh, within a few years I thought we were going to have basically everyone basically having satellite imagery so it took, it's taken about 30 years for that, um, <laughs> for that reality to really uh, to come, to, come to the fore. But we really have reached a point in time here where the data is not the problem anymore, it's actually how we actually get people using that information is the, and how we actually get that information to synthesise is the issue. You know, we can access, and we've got Tim Neal here, um, I and mean, Tim's delivering high resolution uh, di uh, imagery to, uh, to indiv indiv individual producers. Uh, the Ceres, uh, Phil of the Ceres, Ceres uh, guy earlier on was doing the same thing. Uh, and we've got the ability to, to monitor the whole of Australia every five days at 10 metre resolution using 13 band data now. So data is not our problem anymore, it's how we use it and how we integrate it. And just to give you an idea here, I mean, this is sort of where past it from space was only a few years ago, 250 and 500 metre resolution pixels, and we're now basically able to, uh, to, to image an individual property at 10 metres and see individual tree canopies um, basically on a, on a weekly basis. So some of the sort of things that we're, that we're working on, I'm going to dive into uh, just a little bit of technology here for a minute. Onboarding properties, processing data, there's an enormous amount of data available here now. We've developed a, uh, an on-demand, on on-the-fly processing system which basically allows us to process images in the browser and actually throw thousands of CPUs at an individual computing problem. So just for example, here we've actually got the whole of Australia. We actually produced a biomass index map in about less than about a minute. So we've actually accessed 3,000 satellite scenes sitting basically in a data catalogue. And in about a minute or so, we've actually been able to access those, apply a biomass model to them and produce a map of Australia. And we can dive in here. I was doing this last night. Um, this is a, a million, basically 100,000 square kilometres. That's about 10 million hectares. A, you can see the individual parcel, or sorry, the individual property boundaries here. This is a pasture biomass model running across the northern, northern Australia. In about a minute, that 10 million uh, hectares there, I was able to process that whole area and then you can see down here at individual property level, um, the level of variability here. So that's, all, that's happening basically in a minute over about 10 million hectares. So just actually just mention there as well, in terms of the accuracy, um, we've got thousands of sites, so this does not happen by accident. Um, we've actually got producers all around the country, and, and uh, we've got Tim Prance here, <laughs> one of them helping collect, us, collect data. Um, we're basically trying to uh, uh, develop an army of uh, producers uh, basically across the country that are collecting field data for us. I'm going to show you that a little bit more of that in, the, in, in a moment. But you know, to get across 10 million hectares uh, and basically produce, be able to, be able to produce a product on the fly uh, within, a, within a minute or two. And here's an example, basically here's the whole of South Australia. So this was at about 11 o'clock last night. Very happy to grab a laptop and show you here basically live. Um, so there's an image there, the whole of South Australia um, that basically was produced, a uh, multi-spectral image there. It was a, it was a, a two-week image, so taking 15-day 15, 15 image, um, looking at the median spectral response over a 15-day period for the whole of Australia, and that took about a minute to generate um, for the whole, basically for the whole of, whole of the state. And I'll just dive down here in a sort of just a zoomed into this area here. Happy to show you that working on the fly um, uh, later on. So that's all sexy stuff, or it's sexy to me anyway. Um, <laughs> it's really about how we actually then start to integrate that. And at the core of it, so all of those things I was showing you a minute ago, it's all on the left hand side here. It's really about how we collect the data. So we've got mobile apps that we're using. Um, we're using lots of plate meters data, and I don't know why plate meters haven't been used more in Australia, but we're using plate meters to estimate pasture biomass and calibrate data. Um, we've got mobile apps that we basically are giving to people to do visual estimates and collect data basically in the field. Yes, we've got some fancy machine learning in the middle here and it's getting faster and faster all the time. It's quite typical for a given week for us to find a tenfold increase in, in the speed and accuracy of a model 
in a week, basically, where some new techniques, so the, the, the machine learning sort of capabilities are just uh, effectively they're going through the roof. And, and I suppose um, one of the challenges for us is to, is to ensure that we actually have a full understanding of the technology as it moves forward. But we typically, you know, very often, um, I'll basically, uh, we'll be sitting there in, in a week, we've actually increased the throughput of uh, processing by, by tenfold, uh, just by doing things a little bit smarter. At the other end, POPs basically uh, intelligence for producers. So basically, working with uh, working with other service providers to deliver deliver online and and, uh, and in the paddock solutions. I'm going to show you that in a second. So here's just a quick example here. Um, who's doing pasture biomass assessments here on a regular basis? Penny, <laughs> two people. Okay. Yeah. But what this allows us to do, just imagine, you know, if I want to get out in the paddock and I spend I do about fifty thousand kilometres a year, basically driving from basically. Basically, central Queensland to basically South Australia on a regular basis, um, doing pasture cuts. I've got gear in the back of the truck, plate meters, clippers, pasture cuts, going going into hotel rooms and sticking grass grass in their microwave and and um, drying it during the night. They want, must wonder what's what's going on in a hotel room <laughs> the, the next day. But just imagine here, if we basically anyone that's going in the paddock, we can give you an open source mobile app. Um, we can give you some, it'll take you five minutes to load it onto your phone. Um, it basically, you can take a picture, GPS re reading, walk across the paddock doing pasture estimates. Every time you press the button, if you're in mobile phone reception or as soon as you get home, it actually hooks up to the, uh, the cloud and basically dumps that data, the pictures, everything into a, into a database. And if we actually had every one of you in the room here that was in the paddock doing that, we could be generating thousands and thousands of basically of sites, um, basically, and I don't have to leave Toowoomba as long as often as I, often as I do at the moment. And this is sort of the work that we're doing with Tim and others, just to try and get, you know, that sort of that um, the, you know, the data that we need to drive these models. But you know, I've got um, producers that um, you know can be a thousand kilometres away, and I'm sitting there basically analysing data. And as they're in the paddock and pressing the button, I'm actually seeing records coming into our database. Uh, and typically, if they need it, we can actually have a model uh, actually built for the property basically the next day. Um, calibration of plate meters here as well. So um, there's um, every pasture type is different, and uh, so you can't just presume when you're using a plate meter that basically it's going to be the same all the time. Uh, different pasture types, different seasonal uh, growth stages. Um, so we're spending a lot of time building a uh, lot building libraries of uh, of data for plate meters. It's lots of cuts. So I suppose this is the um, this is sort of what the uh, the front end looks like. We're a data science company. And we're not trying to produce um, um, front end. We spend millions of dollars building front ends because it can. Uh, cause it's uh, it's, well, it's a very costly exercise. And it also, for every front front end you build, it often reduces your capacity to integrate and collaborate with others. So we're really focusing on. Yes, we've got to have a front end, but we really are focusing on how we integrate with other systems, and, and such as Agri Web, Maya Grazing, and others. So basically, on a uh, on a five daily basis, I'll, I might I might just um, I'm not sure I'm not going to basically click here and because I bugged it up a little while ago, but I'm going to give it a go anyway. Why not? See if I can get some web. Okay, so there's the little web interface there. Um, so it's the 19th. That's a few days ago. There's an estimate of basically there's the um, the basically the multispectral imagery. This actually works on a mobile app, so it's just hard when you're sitting here when you've got people in front of you. Um, a fractional cover image. You can actually also see here that we're, we're stripping out clouds and doing cloud detection and cloud shadow detection as well to make sure that we actually, the imagery that's coming through is clean. <laughs> NDVI at this time of the year is absolutely useless. Um, so um, there's a lot of um, people who've been using NDVI in pasture systems. It's actually it's, it's completely valid in cropping systems where the crop, the crop is obviously green. Uh, in this case here, we've got basically we've got um, uh, brown pastures, and NDVI just does not work um, in effectively outside of peak growing periods. And then we've got our machine learning model, which is actually predicting pasture biomass basically on a on a five day basis, and we can get uh, uh, estimates of kilograms per hectare there, and the total tons in the paddock. Uh, and the paddock name, you can see they're just uh, clicking around. This property here is highly drought affected. You can see here the numbers down in the 300 kilos per hectare. So it's obviously uh, in pretty poor condition at the moment. Uh, and then we can also produce a traffic light map. So every five days they get a traffic light map of um, basically where their uh, where their pastures are at. Basically, reds reds are the lowest and greens the highest. These this data here, um, any any individual paddock in here, it's a real time feed straight into uh, straight into AgriWeb um, there as well. So that number in there goes straight into the AgriWeb app. And I'm hoping I can get back to here. Oh, very good. Okay, I just wanted to quickly, I'm going to run out of time. 
Just as an example here at the other end of the scale here, this is, um, this is a you know, half a million hectare property. Um, we've, got, we've basically got grazing circles there, so that's a three kilometre and a five kilometre grazing circle. We've got the paddock boundaries and the land types. We can zoom in, that's changes in ground cover. So the red areas are bare ground, the green areas are photosynthetically active um, cover and the blue areas are dry cover. So we can separate the, you know, the green fraction from the brown fraction and the bare, bare fraction. Uh, and we're actually then be able to predict estimates of biomass basically, uh, basically within each grazing distance, basically away from away from the uh, from the water. So you can see here, um, we've got uh, basically lower biomass basically in the areas that are that are that are, that are more watered and being heavily utilised. And as you walk, as you move away from the um, the, the water points, you're obviously you're getting more biomass, you're getting less utilisation. Um, and we see, so we've got integrations. We've got um, we've got a lot of work going with Agro at the moment. Um, uh, Maya Grazing, we're working with ag integrations with Maya Grazing. Uh, Saping Technologies, the same thing. We've actually integrated into into their systems. So uh, the idea here is for us to be, could be in the back end rather than the front end as much as we possibly can. I just wanted to quickly touch base at the other end of the spectrum at sort of the industry level. Um, We've been doing work um, with the Beef Sustainability Framework um, and while individual producers right now mightn't see um, direct benefits to this, we're actually we're starting to do, we're starting to link them up. So we've got a property database or a land parcel database for the whole of Australia. Um, we've actually processed 30 years of satellite data for every single land parcel in Australia, there's about five, five million land parcels greater than a, greater than a hectare. Uh, and there's about 550,000 individual properties, and we've actually got a, a basically a, a, a longitudinal database of tree cover changes, basically per land parcel, and also a, a longitudinal view of ground cover for every property in Australia. So this is a, a South, South Australian example here. Um, so this is basically this is the arid zones there. So the red area is the lowest the lowest ground cover. And then we've actually got a, a graph here over the last 30 years of ground cover changes basically in the, this is the um, arid, arid lands region there. Um, so this blue line here is the median ground cover levels basically for the, uh, for the arid lands region. And so 50% of the arid lands basically is that blue line. Can you see the trend, the long-term trend there in terms of ground cover? So actually we're seeing a decline in ground cover levels basically across the arid lands region over the period. There's obviously a wet period in here, and then we're going, we've actually been on the slide. But the, the more concerning thing here, and this is what we're really trying to highlight here, is that's, 50, that's the 50% of the region. Look at the, the, the lower 10 and 20 percentiles. So what that's saying there is that we've actually got 50% of the landscape that's following a particular trend, and actually it is a declining trend. But the bottom end, so you know, in terms of those, so those land managers that are struggling with their ground cover levels, they're on a very different trajectory. Um, so um, you know, their, their, uh, their decline in ground cover levels is actually a lot steeper than effectively than the, than, the, uh, than the average. So in terms of a land condition perspective, we've actually got the ability to produce a graph like this for every single land parcel in Australia now over the last 30 years. So what we're, what we're doing is there is looking at how we can connect individual producers to that long-term trend data so they can look at the paddock, they, look, they can look at the paddock today, this week, uh, and then we can also get them to look at the last 30 years and put everything in context in terms of what they're doing now. And we're just building a dashboard. So the, by the middle, middle of the year, we'll actually have a, a dashboard that actually allows, um, basically that exposes this, um, this information to um, basically to um, the general public. Now, it's a lot of sensitive information. So clearly, basically, producing individual property level data um, is very, very sensitive. And we have no intention whatsoever to, basically, in terms of um, exposing the individual property data to anyone other than the property owner. Um, so there'll be Zoom controls on here, and we won't be, pro be providing property boundaries and those sorts of th things into the data. There'll be Zoom controls on it, but it's all publicly available. Um, and what people will be able to do is to be able to select a, re select a region and select basically a sort of a, it might be a catchment boundary or it could be a local government area or whatever and then look at um, effectively the trends across that region in terms of their ground cover um, condition over time. Uh, and we're then building some tools to then give them secure access so they can actually then benchmark their property to, to everyone else without people seeing their property. They'll be able to go in and select their property and then benchmark themselves to the rest of the rest of the population if you like without, um, without uh, dealing with those um, major privacy issues. Now I just wanted to just finish up quickly, I've got, um, got a minute. How many consultants have we got here in the room? 
Okay, now um, in terms of producers, when you're actually, when you're onboarding someone at the moment, every single software provider that's actually here at the moment, when a new client rings up and basically you ask them, you know, who are you, where are you, um, basically what are your credentials, um, where's your property boundary? Um, and quite often that can actually can take hours potentially to actually identify where a property is. They might say, I've got a KML file, or they've got, you know, there's, there's ways of getting at it, but generally onboarding of a client is actually quite difficult. We've built a system here which is um, which has been commercialised um, basically over the, in the next few months. We call it the My Farm Property Key. What we've actually done here is taken basically we've got um, land parcel data for the whole of Australia, so the lot plan numbers, everything that sits in your um, your rates notice um, with the lot uh, plan numbers. We've basically got access to every land parcel. We've got an authentication system we've built um, with Meat and Livestock Australia. So. Um, uh, with LPA, so if you're a livestock producer, you've got a PIC code. Um, this has really been built around the livestock sector here, but there's, there's parallels in the grazing in the cropping industry. Um, if you're if you're um, trading in cattle, you're basically or sheep, you've actually got a you've got a property identification code. So we've actually got a system here which goes and authenticates a producer. You put in your your your, um, your LPA credentials and your password and your PIC number. It goes off to Meat and Livestock Australia, authenticates you as a as a valid producer, so we know who you are, we know that you're valid, and you've given us your passwords, so basically, presumably, basically, um, that, that it is the right person. We go to MLA, we get the information on your on the producer's behalf, we then get the address from that, and we actually find that half of the PIC addresses actually are not in the, not the front gate. Um, so God help us if there's ever, ever a biosecurity, um, uh, uh, <laughs> major biosecurity in Australia. So what we then do is get the producer, we present the parcel boundaries to the producer, they can go click, 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 identify the parcel boundaries for their property. Um, there's the lot plan details come in here and they hit the button and that, that then produces basically a property key. So it's actually encrypted, an encrypted data package with all of their th authentication information, their property boundary, their lot plan details. And what that allows us to do is then start to build services around that. So we can, we've got APIs now that we're developing that can give them a satellite image, we can do a change image. What the producer can then do is then take that key and hand that key to any other provider that they actually want to work with. So rather than every third party software provider having to onboard that same client over and over and over again, what we've actually got here now is a single point of truth where that, that key, uh, as that producer hands it to, produce to other, to other organisations, that gives them permission to basically to access their details and where their property is. It's also going to allow us to build APIs as, a, as an industry and allow me as a company to be able to work with Tim or work with you know, Tim Neal or, or other companies that basically are building applications. We've got an authentication key that the producer has provided which we can then build services around and integrate services basically without having to uh, duplicate effort across you know, individual companies. So that'll be, um, that'll be coming onto the, onto the market in the next few months. Um, so we can do things like here. We're doing we're doing a, a trial with a, a trial with about 100 properties um, in the next couple of months, doing forest cover change analysis across those properties as part of an accreditation system, uh, ground cover analyses and other things, um, and uh, and then we've got this. This is just a little blow up here. We've got this encrypted data package in here that basically gets uh, gets produced when you hit the button and hit submit, and when you hit the download button, it doesn't go to anyone else. It goes to you basically, so you produce it as the producer, it comes onto your download, you know, effectively download area and then you decide who you want to pass it to. Um, I suppose really that's really about sort of how we then, you know, integrate those services and start building dashboards. Everyone wants a dashboard, um, but at the moment um, uh, it's really, really difficult for, uh, for these dashboards while individual companies actually are struggling to integrate at that sort of machine to machine level and that, uh, that property key is going to help with that. I'll leave it there, thank you. Thank you.